Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the Center for Internet Security known as CIS. CIS is a nonprofit organization started with a bunch of volunteers meeting together to focus on enhancing cybersecurity readiness and resilience for companies for both the public and the private sector. Obviously, it was founded in the U.S. and had gained recognition, global recognition, started at volunteers, amateurs, for its effort to improve cybersecurity practices. One of the most well-known initi initiatives of the CIS is the development of the CIS controls, and there are 18 of them, and we're going to have to discuss all of them in, in separate sessions, but this is what we're going to be the focus of the CIS. The CIS controls are a set of best practices and guidelines, kind of showing you what to do for organization to improve their cybersecurity posture. It's designed to prioritize and address the most common and impactful security issues that organizations face. Don't worry, we're going to look at all 18 of them one by one. The controls provide a roadmap. Basically, they'll tell you what you need to do for an organization to make your cybersecurity stronger, to strengthen the cybersecurity defenses and reduce the risk of cyber attacks. Now, in this session specifically, we're going to be looking at the design principle of the Center for Internet Security Controls. What are the design principles that apply to all the controls? Let's go ahead and start to discuss the design principle. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, ForhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So the design principles of the CIS control are fundamental guidelines that inform the development and implementation of these cybersecurity best practices. Think of this as the framework. These design principles make sure that the controls are effective, practical, adaptable to various organizations in cybersecurity environment. And we're going to see how eventually in details. But the purpose of this, this control is to make you uh, cybersecurity immune. That's the whole purpose. So the first principle of its designs is prioritization. So the controls are designed to prioritize security action based on their potential impact on the organization cybersecurity. And what's prioritizing? Say, what's risk one? What's risk two? What's risk three? So one is the riskiest. What's its impact if that happened? This helps the organization to focus on what? On the most critical security issues. And hopefully this makes sense. Recognizing that, the, for example, recognizing that external servers are more likely to be targeted. Well, this is a priority. We'll make this as a priority. Therefore, what we do, patching and securing the external ser servers first, prioritizing what we need to do. Two, consensus. There's a consensus principle. The controls are developed through collaborative process that involve experts from various organization sectors government industry academia so what we're saying is when we're when we are we want to create the control let's have everyone involved government industry expert academia everyone that's involved this consensus driven approach ensure that controls reflect a broad understanding of cyber cyber security back best practices because for example government need is different than industry need and within the industry we might have different type of industries so we want everyone to be involved we want the academia they might give us a different idea from their own research. So we want to use consensus in designing those controls. A third principle is measurability. What's measurability? Being able to measure something. The controls are designed to be measurable. You'll be able to, to measure your progress, meaning you can assess their compliance and effectiveness. For example, measurable control enable, enable the organization to track their progress in improving their cybersecurity posture over time. For example, last month we had 10 attempts and we defended uh, 8 out of 10. This month we had 10 and we were able to defend 9 out of 10. We were able to measure, measure our progress. An organization sets, a, sets up a system to scan the network on a regular basis to looking for vulnerabilities and assign a numerical score of each scan result. You know, if we scanned uh, 
and we find um, five potential vulnerabilities. Next time, only four because we fixed one. Therefore, we're measuring our progress. This allows the organization to track the effectiveness of its effort in order to reduce the vulnerabilities over time. Another design principle of this control is continuous improvement. And continuous improvement is a common theme in business overall. What does that mean? Recognize that cybersecurity is constantly evolving. And this is so true about cybersecurity because it's constantly, oftentimes on a daily basis, you have a hacker that writes a new program or create a new virus that you are not aware of. So you have to have a continuous improvement. Therefore, control are designed to be adaptable, changeable, open to updates. You can update them. Why do you need to update them? You always have new threats as technology emerges. So continuous improvement is essential to stay in resilience against evolving cyber cyber threat, daily evolving cyber threat. So a company on a regular basis reviews and updates the incident response plan to, to, to learn from the previous security incident and change its defenses in terms of the threat landscape. Another design is simplicity. The control are intended to be clear, concise, and practical. It means useful, simple to use. They should be easy to understand and implement. Even organizations with limited cybersecurity resources, they can implement them. They can use them. Otherwise, if you create something very, compl very complex, you're going to be exclude, for example, small organizations that don't have the resources. So security policies and procedures are written in plain language to avoid unnecessary technical jargon that all employees and all organization can f implement them and follow them. There's something called implementation agnosticism or technology neutrality. CIS control are designed to be technology agnostics. What does that mean? It means they are applicable across all industries as much as possible in technology environment. Again, you don't want to keep anyone out. They are not tied to any specific tool, vendor, or platform, allowing an organization to choose the solution that best fits their need. So those controls should be adaptable to everything. An organization selects a firewall solution that align with the specific needs and budget rather than being locked into a particular vendor proprietary technology. So simply put, it has to be simple, simple and neutral. Simple means easy to utilize uh, and neutral means I can utilize it. I can change it to my own, customize it to my own need. Integration, well, what does that mean? The controls are intended to be integrated into the organization overall strategies. So the control, when we design them, they should be integrated with other strategies and risk management front framework like NIST, COBIT, Trust Service Criteria. Those are risk management framework. Don't worry, we're going to learn about NIST, COBIT, and Trust Service Criteria. Each one of them will take two, three, four sessions and NIST several sessions actually. So they should complement existing, existing security measures and support a holistic approach to cyber security. Simply put, they are integrated with other risk management framework. They don't conflict with them. So the, orga the organization security team collaborate closely with IT operation to ensure that security measures are seemingly integrated into the organization infrastructure and business processes. And there is no conflict between these controls and other risk management framework. Customization, we kind of touch upon this. While these controls provide a baseline of the best practices, they can be customized to, to the company's own need because each company is different. Each company is exposed to a different risk and risk of individual organization. And this flexibility allows the company to do the what? To tailor their cybersecurity effort. Okay. While adopting the CIS control as a baseline, a financial institution tailor its security to address the unique risk associated with handling financial transaction and customer data. For example, the banks, they might have a different need than a retail store. Also, we have to have community involvement. CIS encourage active involvement from the cyber community, including feedback, contribution, and collaboration between all sorts of people, stakeholders who are involved. And this ensures what? That the control remain relevant and effective because everyone is telling us what's going on in their own industry. A nonprofit cybersecurity organization actively seeks input and feedback from its members and the broader cybersecurity community. Yes, they do have their own members, but they also ask others, outsiders, government, public, different industries, academia, to improve their guidelines and recommendation. And the principles has to be practical, designed to address practical security challenges that the organization faced in the real world, not something theoretical. They aim to provide actionable guidance that organization can use, implement, to enhance their social, their not social, their security position.
An organization with limited resources focuses on implementing basic security measures such as multi-factor authentication for critical system and employee cybersecurity training before investing in a more advanced security technology. So they have to be practical, useful for the organization. What else do we need to know about SIS? SIS controls are supported by SENSE. What's SENSE? It's an organization, it's a private organization, System Admin, Audit, Network, and Security. This organization, it's known for its cybersecurity training and certification program. They're highly regarded in the industry. So if you're looking to get into this as a future CPA, as a future accountant, you want to look into these things, kind of add them to your CPA. They offer a wide range of training courses and certification covering various aspects of cybersecurity, including network security, incident response, so on and so forth. Okay. Also, SENSE hosts the annual SENSE Institute training event, which is popular gathering for cybersecurity professional to learn, share knowledge, and network. And this is part, an example of the community effort, staying up to date. Let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from Farhat Lectures. That's going to help us understand this lecture. Okay, there's many more on, on Farhat Lectures, but this is only one. Which design principle? of the Center for Internet Security Control emphasize addressing the most critical security issues first. Is it consensus? Is it, is it measurability? Is it prioritization? Or is it continuous improvement? In those type of questions, I would say it should take you like a few seconds to answer. What am I doing? Which one is the most critical issue first? I am prioritizing prioritization. Now you want to make sure you know the other ones. So the principle of prioritizing emphasize, emphasize addressing the most critical issues first, ensuring resources are allocated to the highest impacted areas because you have limited resources. Now consensus is correct, but it focuses on the collaborative development rather than prioritization. For example, when you go to SANS and <laughs> that annual meeting, that's part of, the, you know, part of the consensus. When the company kind of, they have the input from everyone, that's part of the consensus. consensus. Measurability, yes, it's, it's a good principle, but it's the ability to measure and assess compliance and effectiveness of control. You want to know the difference between them. And continuous improvement is always a great practice. It's about adaptability and evolving control not specifically prioritization means constantly, continually learning about threats and how can we deal with those threats. What should you do now? You should go to Farhat Lectures and do what? Look at additional MCQs. That's going to help you do what? Prepare better. Invest in yourself. The CPA exam is 20, 30, 40 year investment in your career. Don't shortchange yourself. Go ahead. Work hard now. You will enjoy your successes later. Good luck. Study hard and, of course, stay safe.